Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to the Philly Sports Dish. I'm the one and only Big Game Dame. I'm here with my man, Do. And for another week, we just got to jump right into it. As we speak, the Sixers just played their first game. Yes. One, one going away. Mm -hmm. A lot of good signs, positive things to pull out of it. But let's get to the big story, and it's obviously <sighs> Ben Simmons being ejected from practice. It looks like he's trying the James Harden strategy from last year. Your overall reaction, what do you think? Um, I would like to think that the Sixers management anticipated this, thought like, you know, he was going to do something. He might not know exactly what he was going to do, but he was going to be something. He was going to do something to be disruptive. Mm -hmm. um, right now, the Sixers just have to Stay above the fray. Just handle like adults. They have all the leverage. Yeah. So just just play about a book. We I've always said like they all should have came to an understanding. And this mm -hmm. is what we expect. So if you come to that understanding and he's not holding up his end of the bargain, then it's like a work setting. You know, you got to write him up, document everything, and just go from there. You have to be the Sixers have to be the the adult in the room. Ben is acting like a, a spoiled child. And the Sixers can't match that energy. They have to be the adult, for lack of a better yeah, term. King Joffe, just let him wait. <laughs> just, like, yeah. freeze him up. Like, let him rot, seriously, at this point. The Sixers don't have to do anything with him. They have him under contract. We, we saw the team play. You, life goes on. Yes. Life goes on. The game goes on. And the goal hasn't changed one bit. If he doesn't want to be here, he's the one who spends his money you know, mm -hmm. frivolously. And this is what I want to ask you, because I've been thinking about this. Mm -hmm. LSU, there were issues there. Yes. Okay. Coming into the league, Ben had a certain set of requirements. Okay. Mm -hmm. The whole rookie year thing. Mm -hmm. This is a pattern since before he was even drafted. Well, once again, if we want to use the child analogy, why does a child act out? Because they're no longer getting their way. So sometimes as a parent, you have to look in the mirror and say, what role did I play in this? How did I enable the, the child, for lack of a better term, to get, how did we get here? Yeah. And I think the Sixers um, have to take their responsibility for this because they have played the part in enabling Ben Simmons. So if I've been enabled, then of course I'm going to act out. And we talked about this before. I think it all comes back, especially when the process happened. Mm -hmm. This franchise has low self-esteem. When they drafted Ben Simmons, they knew the red flags, okay? But And I know the NBA is a coddling culture, mm -hmm. but if you remember, there was so much of a fear. Oh, my God, he's going to leave in four years. He's going to go to the Lakers. He's going to sign with the Lakers. He's going to be such – he's going to be like, – uh, what were they saying? Trans, trans – uh, you know, game changing yeah, talent, talent, the yes. next LeBron, possibly all of this stuff. And I think the Sixers just came in there with just such an incredible low self esteem poise. See, I, I, I wouldn't say low self esteem poise, I would say everybody just was raw. Like, you look at new owner, new general manager, new head coach. So it was like the blind leading the blind. Nobody had ever been in that position on an NBA level. And now you're, you know, basically gutting your house to start over. So who who takes charge in there? It's like nobody to say, like, you know, this is how things normally go. This is how you should handle things. And I, I think if they're honest with themselves, in hindsight, you have to bring somebody in with experience. And I think they just Agreed. look at it like, since we're just tearing it down anyway, we don't have to get some big name exec or some, well, no big time coach would come and go through that. And maybe that was part of the problem. But at the end of the day, you have to have somebody there that knows the ropes. Mm -hmm. And like and like you said, that goes back to what happened, to being able to enable him. And it's like your parents not being present. So, of course, the kid's going run amok. But now your parents want to be like, no, now we're going to tighten the ship up. And it's like, wait a minute. What? Yeah. 
Hey. I'm going to be honest with you, too. And this is what I wanted to run by. I've been thinking about this a lot this week. You know, trying, and it's difficult to jump into Ben's head, but I think he's going through and he and it's manifesting in his behavior in existential crisis. I think his entire basketball career, you can see, like we talked about in the past, the ego has mm -hmm. been there. You know, like honestly, best player in Australia. And I think when I say the existential crisis, his ego and his mindset, and he has, he sees himself as a brand. But the reality is he's not as good as he thinks he is. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, though, because we know we're perfectionists. Um, they don't want to do things unless everything is to their liking. And maybe he knows that he's burnt his bridges here and, and with the crowd. And I think maybe it's come to the point where he just felt like I can't perform here. Like, and I, he wants out. And unfortunately, he doesn't know how to express it in a professional way. And he's acting out. But everything points to he just, he can't take it here. And he's not built for it. And he doesn't have the tools or, I guess, um, the people around him to help him navigate this situation because it doesn't have to be this difficult. I think, and I slightly disagree with you. I see your point, but I think psychologically speaking, Ben Simmons is used to being successful a certain way. And this comes back to my, my teaching experience. He is used to being successful a certain way. He got into the NBA where it's the highest level of talent. And he's got the thing that he does. He's got his X, Y, and Z that he does. And the NBA is like, no, we're not going to allow you to do X, Y, and Z. And now what? Okay, and that's part of his existential crisis where I think instead of improving his game and you see it at LSU and his pattern and his behavior, Ben Simmons is thinking, all right, I need to go somewhere where I am allowed to do X, Y, and Z. And we've talked about this in previous podcasts. There's nowhere to hide. Listen, I, I'm pretty sure we're going to talk about this in future podcasts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, cause at the end of the day, like we, you know, the Sixers yeah. thought they were getting a transitional talent and they got Draymond Green. I'm going to be honest with you. They got Draymond and Ben Simmons. That's who you are. And Draymond doesn't get to be a diva and act like James Harden to get out of town. So, yeah, but Draymond don't have his uh, his ceiling though. <laughs> yeah, but here's the deal: there's a lot of people who got there's a lot of people who have a high ceiling. But but I'm saying that that's why you go through this. This this is why we're here because they know and people really know what the ceiling is. So yeah. The saga shall continue next week. Maybe he'll be here next time we talk to you guys. Maybe he won't. Who knows? I say kick rocks, Ben. All right. <laughs> Speaking of kicking rocks, Philadelphia Eagles last week. And I'm not even going to really even try to get like a smooth transition in this. I'm just going to go right there. I'm watching this game. I'm going to be completely honest with you. All of my years watching the Eagles, and it's been well over three decades now, that's the worst play calling I've ever seen in my life so far. Like, I'm just going to be flat out there, and I'll ask your reaction to what I got to say. Worse than Chip Kelly, worse than Rich Kotite. I know I'm bringing up the K word, but, <laughs> you know, Rich Kotite, I got to be honest with you. He is not, Sirianni is not a play caller on an NFL. You can just tell when somebody's got it and when somebody doesn't. He doesn't have it. I'm just going to flat out put it out there. Um, yeah, it looks like he might be in over his head. Um, only thing I can say is we got to continue just to be patient and let it play out. Yeah. It'll, you know, it'll expose itself at the end of the day. It's but exposing I, itself. I definitely agree with you. That that left a lot to be desired. Um, it, it, it was. It, it was embarrassing. It was... It was like, why is he calling plays? My whole deal is this as well, because this is supposed to be an evaluation year for the team, mm -hmm. an evaluation year for the quarterback. But how in the blue earth can you get a decent and fair evaluation when the play calling is that horrific, when the, the, when the formations are that bad, when Tampa Bay is literally coaching your team? Tampa Bay is telling you, all right, guys, you're going to be here. You know, like how in middle school, <laughs> the referee like tells the, the yeah. kids when they play, no, line up here. Tampa Bay's coaching the Eagles offense up because they know exactly where they're going to be. It's like Chip at the end. I, I will say this, though. Um, I think the quarterback has to get a little heat 
Um, I don't, I don't think he was particularly sharp at all. Um, I think he missed a lot of throws. Like I said, we're being patient, but um, I know we want to put a lot of that on Sirianni and and the play calling, but he he missed some some he open did. receivers. He did, and and who knows how that changes the outcome or whatever. But I agree with your overall big picture assessment. I, I really do. And once again, his mechanic, and this is where it comes back to the coaches. And I'm I'm not going to defend Jalen Hurts. He like he has not played well. Okay. okay. But once again, his mechanics were bad. Once again, because of the rush, he wasn't able to step into his throws. But mainly the mechanics, where it's like, okay, this is where it comes back to the coaching staff. And I'm highly concerned about this coaching staff. Okay. Yeah. And, and, like, why does this young quarterback? Why are his mechanics not improving? And not only that, I, I can't. I can't think that when you're coming up with a game plan, it's we want our quarterback to throw 40, 50 times. The young quarterbacks throw the ball twenty times. You know, Russell Wilson's first year, even RG three was protected. Like this kid is not being protected. He's supposed to be throwing the ball around twenty times average. It's God forbid. It's not like you got Miles Sanders. <laughs> and here's the offensive thing. When Sirianni during the press conference is like, oh, no, no, a lot of these, you know, the, the, the run pass option. Yeah. Oh, it's supposed to be a run. Mm -hmm. My man, you're the coach. You're the offensive coordinator. You can literally say, I am calling a run play. I'm not calling a run pass option. Young, if, the, if a young quarterback mm -hmm. who can run with his legs is going to pull that ball and take off. All right. That's when you call him and say, no, 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 we're actually running the ball. OK, we're running the ball. Jalen, you need to settle down. OK. And that's what I mean about he's not being protected. And it's frustrating. It's frustrating to watch because, you know, we can't fairly evaluate, in my opinion. It's hard to fairly evaluate because it's that bad. Let me ask you a question. Let me let me play conspiracy theorists. Ready? Yeah. Is this a, a, a mastermind move? by the general manager. Now hear me out. If he hits with the quarterback, great. If he doesn't hit with the quarterback, well, guess what? He gets to draft another quarterback and start the clock on his evaluation again because you can't fire him now because, hey, we got a new quarterback and now we got to get his new quarterback another year or two. It all depends on the level of how much Sirianni was the owner's choice. And how much impact how he had in that decision. Okay. Because there's a lot like this is not a good choice. <clears throat> it wasn't a good choice from day one, honestly. And I'm going to be completely honest with you. It was that good old boy network was the reason why Sirianni is here. Okay. The most qualified guy d did not get the job. The man who came to the owner with a plan to rebuild his team and a strong coaching staff for a young quarterback. But no, he wasn't somebody's guy. And I'm choosing my words very carefully when I say someone's guy. Because we know where that means. We know where that we know what that means. Mm -hmm. And we know that Deuce got cast off into Detroit. Because no, 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 you need a little bit more time to prove yourself. When did Sirianni ever have to prove himself? Yeah. Let me be completely honest with you. But Deuce Staley has to prove himself. So now Deuce is in Detroit, and we have this guy, and it's the worst play calling I have seen as an Eagles fan. And I've been following them. Paul McFadden, the barefoot kicker, <laughs> is my first year. And my obscure reference for this week. That's my first year following the Eagles as a little kid. I thought he was going to break his toes every kick. You so know? Was, it, was the play calling better by Marion Campbell? Oh, the Swamp <laughs> Fox. There's an obscure <laughs> reference. Yeah. God rest his soul. I'd rather have a swamp fox in here at this point. You know, like, <laughs> so we got Marion Campbell, Rich Cotite, <laughs> Paul McFadden. You know, well, let's throw somebody else in there. Uh, Junior Tuttle Latassi. There we go. Let's go, Obscure Eagles. <laughs> Pumpy Tudors. There we go. <laughs> I don't know. You can hear my frustration, and my frustration is because this hire was someone's guy. And like you said, he's in over his head. And it's the it, it ties in with the Gruden thing that we heard. Yes. And that's where my frustration is. And it's my team. And I know Laurie is supposed to be open-minded and liberal, but he's still part of that system. He's definitely part of that system. And this is what happens when you hire someone's guy instead of the most qualified person. I, I definitely hear you. And I'm definitely going to expound on that. 
as the season continues. I'm going to let this play out. I'm going to let it develop. Mm-hmm. But I think this is an interesting conversation that we can table and definitely have. Oh, at the yeah. end of the year, I'm going to sound like Sam Jackson in Pulp <laughs> Fiction if this continues when it comes yeah. to this. Because I'm not pulling any punches. Because, you know, as a black man, we know how this feels. I know how this feels. Deuce knows how this feels. And it's it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. This guy doesn't know what he's doing right now. But he has the job of a CEO of a multi-million dollar, billion dollar corporation. Okay, because he was someone's guy. I'm gonna leave it at that. We'll see. Hopefully, he'll get better. Go birds. All right. So <laughs> you can tell I'm not happy. <laughs> All right. So let's just talk about to close things out. The week in sports. Um, let's go NBA starting up. So yes. I thought we can give a prediction of. Who yeah. we see coming out the East and West. Everyone's saying Nets, Lakers. Mm-hmm. Because the best teams always go there. The teams with the most talent usually go to the finals. Do you see it that way? I do, but I'm not going to predict that. Yeah. That's too easy. I'm, I'm going to here, – here's where I'm going. I'm going Bucks, Nuggets. In the lowest rated NBA <laughs> finals in the history of the universe. And, and the Nuggets win it with one caveat that Jamal Murray gets back at least a month before the playoffs start. If he can get back a month before the playoffs start, I'm going Nuggets hoist the gold trophy. Okay. <laughs> I'm going Lakers. Sixers. <laughs> just because it's Philadelphia. Why not? No logical reason, but it's Philadelphia, just like when the Eagles won. No logic. Ben Simmons isn't there anymore. So now, like, there's no choke job in the fourth quarters. They get lucky how everything fell in place with the Bucks. A couple injuries happen. Kyrie does something stupid. Listen, I always said I loved your objectivity. A million. <laughs> oh, this is just completely because it's, uh, this is how things happen in this town. Like, just all of the years people were waiting for it is not going to happen. Now everything, all this weird stuff is going to happen in the NBA. Who knows? Robots, kidnap teams, some some type of crazy stuff. And somehow because it's Philadelphia and all this weird stuff, like Embiid, before he gets hurt next year, you I'm know, he, he puts it all in and they sneak around. I didn't say they were going to win it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying they're going somehow they're going back into the finals because it's I, Philadelphia. I take that. <laughs> they'll back into the now they'll do it somehow like the Simmons trade they'll they'll trade him have yeah. some point to see they'll get some role players that I fit in so. nicely I can see Cork Miles running the point in the finals okay <laughs> yeah I'm telling you like weird stuff is going I agree with you that's why I'm saying weird stuff is going to happen because it's Philadelphia right, I'm going to seem like a genius if it happens it's not very likely but I'm saying weird stuff because the last couple of years, everyone was waiting. Now everybody's like, all right. So now watch everything just break right and fall in place. And the ball bounces the right way. And good teams get kidnapped by aliens. And other teams implode. It, it never fails. This is like Philly. This is the way the Eagles won it. Because everything fell in place. But the Sixers will not win the championship. The Lakers are going to win it. So Sixers get swept again. <laughs> hey, come on, Doc. Doc winning the tight. It ain't happening. So I'm just saying they're going to get lucky. Um, and all the good teams will. So we'll see. He's just like no shot in hell. Yeah, I'm, just, <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just I'm saying they get lucky. It's Philadelphia. Now I'm going off the Philadelphia thing. Unless something happens in the Ben Simmons saga, I, I, I can't see it. No one can see it. That's why it's going to happen. <laughs> That's why. It's Philadelphia, man. <laughs> so, on that note, and please don't hold me to that. But I'm just. On that note. That's going to close it for <laughs> Philly Sports Day. I did not lose my mind. Sirianni did not break my brain. It's Philadelphia. How long have you people been around this town? Some weird stuff happens, okay? So please follow us. We are ready and available on every social media platform possible. Instagram, all evil Facebook, you know? You can find us on all our different podcasts, all where you find your favorite podcasts. Look up Philly Sports Dish, the best 20 minutes in sports. Like I said, 
real conversation here without the chubby little dubbers, you know. Yeah. Thank you for all the support. Yeah, and we definitely notice people supporting us. Thank you so much as we continue to grow, all right? So we'll see you next week. Eagles, Raiders, the Ben Simmons saga continues, and he'll make fun of me for predicting the Sixers to get lucky, okay? They gotta get lucky eventually. Okay. Eventually, right? Right? <laughs> All right, we will see you next week. Till then, go birds.